Okay, so in this video, we're talking about Kepler's laws in a bar center. So our essential standard that matches is we need to explain the motion through space, excuse me, explain the Earth's motion through space, including precision, nutation, the bar center, and its path about the galaxy. And we're going to focus on the bar center and its, the Earth's path about the galaxy. You need to be able to explain um, the planetary orbits using Kepler's laws, define a bar center, and then explain how the bar center relates to Kepler's first law and is how it's it used to determine stellar masses. So we'll come back to this to make sure that you can actually check off all these items. All right, so Kepler's first law states that each planet that orbits the sun is going to orbit the sun in an elliptical orbit with the bar center as the common focus or one of the common focus. So a bar center is the center of mass where two or more objects orbit each other. And this is going to allow the orbits, this is going to allow the objects to balance each other out. Then we have a stellar mass, which is the mass of a star. And then eccentricity is the measure of how circular or how round an orbit is. So in order to determine the stellar mass, we must know the bar center, which is going to be the center in which each planet orbits the sun in an elliptical orbit. So in order to calculate the stellar mass, you have to, one, know what r is, which is the distance from the sun, and know what the mass of the stars are. So if you look here, we have the orbits of star B and the orbits of star A, and you notice that star A has a more eccentric um, orbit than star B because star B's orbit is more round. So that means that it's less eccentric. So we have our foci here. We can say that this one is the sun here, if you would like. But we have star B. This is MB, which is going to be the mass, and then MA for the, the mass of um, star A. And then we have our radii here, or the distance from the sun. So in order to calculate the star and mass, the reason why you need to know where the bare center is, this is the bare center here. So you can only calculate the distance from the sun and the mass of the star if you have the bar center. So you're going to take R the distance from star A plus the distance of um, star B. And then same thing for the mass, the distance of, ma um, I'm sorry, the mass of star A and the mass of star B. We're going to simplify those terms and put them together. So the mass of star A multiplied by the, ma the distance of star A is going to be equivalent to the mass of B multiplied by the distance of B. So in Kepler's second law, a line connecting the sun from the planet sweeps through equal areas in equal um, amounts of time. So we have this term called perihelion, which is the orbital point that's closest to the sun. And then we have ephelion, which is the orbital point that's furthest from the sun. In this diagram, we're going to show you which is which. So we have the planet here. This is going to be in perihelion. Perihelion happens on January 3rd, approximately of each year. This is going to be during winter, of course. And winter, as a result, is going to happen fast, and we're going to have a short winter in the northern hemisphere. So the gravity of the sun is going to pull this planet through this um, shaded area here in an equivalent amount of time as it would if the planet was over here in Erfalen, which is going to happen approximately July 4th. And this is going to be during the summer. This is going to cause the summer to be a bit slower. And for summer in the northern hemisphere is going to result in a time period that's going to be longer than winter. So this little white area that's kind of covered here is going to be our equal areas in the equal, equal intervals, excuse me, intervals of time. So once again, the strength of the gravity force of the sun is going to cause this planet to move very quickly here. And you notice that it is close to the sun, which is how we know that it's perihelion. And then here, notice that the distance from the sun is greater, which is perihelion. And that's going to be um, happening during the summertime. So it's not that the summer is caused by the closeness of the sun, if you see here to the, the planet or to Earth in our case. And the same thing with winter is actually the opposite of what you would normally think. So then we have Kepler's third law. This states that the planets closest to the sun have shorter periods than those further away from the sun. 
proportional proportionality is going to be covered here um, like it was in Kepler's second law, but it's referring to the distance and the planet's period. So the square of a planet's period, which is going to be represented by T, is proportional to the cube of its mean distance, which is going to be represented by R. So that simple equation here is T squared equals R cubed. So I have some examples for you. We have three different planets. We have their period, which is measured in Earth years, and we have their distances, which are measured in astronomical units, which is the average distance from each planet of Earth. I'm sorry, the average distance of Earth to the sun. So then we're going to have Mercury has a period of 0 0.240, um, which has a distance of 0.387 from the sun. And then Mars has a period of 1.81, excuse me, 1.881, which has a distance from the sun of 1.524. And then Saturn has a period of 29.46, which a distance of the sun from 9.539. So here you notice that our periods are increasing as the distance from the sun increases. So you can always do this calculation for yourself or any of the other planets that I have not included, Earth, for example. Just remember that the period itself is going to be T squared, and then the distance from the sun is going to be R cubed. So we're going to go back to our original slide. So, can we now explain the planetary orbits using Kepler's law? You should be able to define bar center, and you should be able to be able to explain how the bar center relates to Kepler's law and how we can use the bar center to determine stellar masses. Good luck.